Welcome to this rapid revision session on the Anglo-Saxon economy. Economy, how much money a country has and how that money is made, also related to work. In late Anglo-Saxon England, coins were very valuable, made from silver and sometimes gold. This made them rarer than they are today. For most people, things were bought and sold in an exchange economy, which meant that one thing would be swapped for something else instead of bought with money. So, for example, if you needed a loaf of bread and you weren't able to get the grain yourself, you might swap a couple of your eggs or apples for it. Anything that your family didn't need to live, which might include extra food that you'd grown yourself, would be swapped for something else at markets in the burrs or just with a neighbour, and this was called trade. So, in the Anglo-Saxon economy, what was bought and sold? Firstly, let's have a look at the imports. These are things that are brought into the country. Really, not a lot, not like today at least. Food could not be well preserved, so Saxon farms produced food that was sold and consumed locally rather than brought from abroad. However, trade with Europe imported fine quality cloth, wine, which couldn't really be grown and made in England, and some pottery. There was also jewellery that was imported as well, though it should be pointed out that the quality of golden Anglo-Saxon jewellery was actually exported to Europe as well. Then we've got the exports. These are the things that are sent from England outwards. England produced a lot of wool. Our climate's perfect for sheep, after all. And this was vital for cloth making all over Europe. After all, everybody needs clothes. Wool merchants could become thanes if they'd completed three trading trips in their own ship. If you're not sure what a thane is, uh, they're like a local noble with certain powers. Check out my lesson on Anglo-Saxon society to find out more. English scribes produced illuminated manuscripts and books too. These were renowned across Europe. An important component in the Anglo-Saxon economy was the burr. But what was a burr? As you can see, this is like a village or small town, but it's surrounded by a defensive wall. It's fortified against attack, but its function is not purely military. This is the palisade, like a very heavily built fence. There's also a gate to control access. This actually has an important economic function too. You can check what goods are being brought into the town and collect any taxes that are due. The bank and ditch provide further status and also protection to the burr. And there are towers to look out for enemy approaches. However, we're going to consider their military functions, but also their economic functions now. Here is an example of a real burr. This is Wareham in Dorset. This is a really good example of a burr that has survived with its town plan more or less intact. You can see right away the crossroads, just like you saw in the artist's impression just now, but around the outside, we also have the remains of the banks, ditches and palisade, even if the river has moved slightly to encroach upon the old town walls. So, earlier in Anglo-Saxon history, especially, Anglo-Saxon England faced a major threat from Viking invasion, and as a result, many towns were fortified. These fortified towns, known as burrs, were not very sophisticated, but they were effective. The purpose was to protect the people inside from attack. The first step in constructing a burr was to dig a very deep trench and then to build a wooden or stone wall around the town. This was usually the palisade. Inside the walls, the town, or the burrs rather, were not very different from any other town, except for the large gates on either end of the town that controlled who came in and out. The safety of burrs across southern England increased trade. People felt safe and confident buying and selling inside the burrs. Their defended gates also controlled who had access to the markets and provided the Shire Reeves with a means of collecting the king's taxes on anything that was brought in for sale. Some suggested tasks then. You could now describe a burr, explain how the safety of the gates and of the burr encouraged trade and helped the collection of the taxes. And you might be able to try and name some existing burrs that you might know them yourself. There are lots of them in the country. Maybe you live in one. Let's take a moment to consider coinage. Here we can see the obverse and reverse, that's the heads and tails normally, of an Anglo-Saxon silver penny. This is a coin of Edward the Confessor, and you might be able to make out his name around the head side. It says Edward Rex. Not an especially realistic picture of him, but you can sort of make out some sort of bearded bloke in a, a, a crown. On the other side, we can see details of where this was minted, and we can see a cross representing Christianity and the power of the church. Anglo-Saxon coinage was very high quality. 
although one, this one appears to have been clipped on the sides, which was quite commonly done in order to get a little bit of spare silver fraudulently off the side. However, a coin like this might represent a poor person's wages for an entire week, and so they couldn't afford to have very many of these coins, and they weren't especially useful in day-to-day -day purchases. Compare that to the coin of William I. It's slightly more realistic in its depiction of William, and you can see him looking very stern there, holding a sword, altogether looking rather more ferocious than Edward the Confessor was. And on the back, we can see an even more exaggerated form of the cross, perhaps showing increased power of the church. The thing is, coins are not just about money. They're a propaganda statement. By minting your own coins, you are showing that you are in charge as king. And so it was important for William, when he took over Anglo-Saxon England, to show this through the coinage. So you could now briefly explain how the coin symbolises and strengthens the king's power, but also how it upholds the power of the church. Some final points then. Saxon England was based partly on an exchange economy, swapping things. Saxon England also had an export economy. They exported or sent things out more than they imported them or brought them in. The main export was wool. Burrs made trade and tax collection easier and more effective. And coins were high quality and helped advertise the king's power. I hope that was useful to you. If it was, like this video, or maybe leave a comment as to something that you would like to see me do a video on soon. There will be more content in this series coming shortly, so subscribe to find out more. Thanks very much for watching.